Thank you. That was a very eloquent uh, introduction. I'm a primary school teacher. And the best part about being a primary school teacher is not just the holidays, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but also the fact that you have little tiny bundles of energy and enthusiasm and melodrama around you every day. So every now and then, I get a very solemn and doleful face around me. Miss, I can't do my work. Right, and why not? Because I lost my pencil. It was just there. I had kept it in my pencil box. It's not there now. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> so I don't know if you've ever heard this, but the standard primary teacher rhetoric is, I wonder why. Did your pencil suddenly get legs? And did it run away? Some mums use that too, yeah? So you can almost you know, see the glee in their eyes thinking, yes, my pencil has run away. Excellent. But the problem is that every now and then, a caring teacher or a caring friend or a caring parent will give another pencil and say, all right, get on back with your work. Now, chances are what? that some of us have experienced the same phenomenon, that our pens or our pencils have run away just when we need them, right? Chances are that you are going to get that pen or that pencil back somewhere in the nook and the cranny of your drawers, but by that time, you have another pencil in your hand. So every year, what we realized what a lot of pencils and a lot of things were discarded without being used to the fullest. And in workshops, seminars, conferences, you have a lot of stationery being distributed, again, without being used to the fullest. And we talk about a lot of the stationery, which is actually going back to our landfills. That means we are using a lot of energy and a lot of money in waste disposal, whereas these pencils and pens and stationery items are still usable. Now, being a primary school teacher, um, I realize that as the students proceed on their learning journeys every year, they generate a lot of pencil, a lot of stationery, um, which are actually usable. But at the end of the year, they are discarded because everyone likes to start fresh in the new year, you know, fresh year, new stationery kit, new pencil boxes. Uh, whereas we are privileged enough to do that here, there were some people in some other places which did not even have basic access to the simplest of stationery. So we came together in 2004, and just five classes came together and collected all the stationery at the end of the year, and we collected a whopping 30 kilos from just five classes. And that was an eye-opener. Oh, my goodness, if five classes can generate five, uh, 30 kilograms of stationery, can you imagine how much the whole school would collect? So we all came together, spread the movement, and the whole school started collecting and um, you know, keeping all the pencils and stationery and tiny pieces of erasers all together. I took the stationery back to Sai Kripa in Noida, India. Now, Sai Kripa is an orphanage and is also a school, and currently, at this point of time, it has about 51 students. Every single penny that they have needs to go to buying their basic amenities like food and health, education as well. So buying stationery was one possibly less burden that they could do with. Again, stationery here is not just a need, it's also a luxury. A good stationery set does not come their way very easily. This is Manzil in New Delhi. Now, Manzil caters to students from low-income groups, and the volunteer teachers come to Manzil and they teach. Again, stationery is something that they cannot really afford to spend a lot of money in, whereas we here do have a lot of good quality stationery that can be used by these kids. So that's where I took these stationery items to. And we started calling this project Traveling Pencils. Um, very recently, um, say about six months ago, we came in touch with student volunteers from NUS, and there were groups that were going out. And this is one of the groups that took pencils to the Mao Sugar Central Elementary School in the Philippines. So the whole thing, the movement started, and then uh, we started getting more and more people who were involved and who wanted to take stationery to different places, which we thought was very good. So, Pencils come to us, my students, whenever they have their spare time, they actually take the stationery, sort them into givable sets. Uh, we need to make it a decent giving, uh, so some kind of dignity in giving. So they basically come together and they collect all the stationery, they bundle up uh, chunks together, and you might see actually two red crayons in one packs, but at least it's looking giveable. So that's how we've started this project. And, uh, now we collect about 60 to 70 kilos per year, which is a whopping amount. Now, as the project grew, we had, it, it took a very organic shape, you know, just like an amoeba. So we had someone coming to us and saying, oh, what about books? Do you take books? 
and the first instinct was to say no, oh, we don't take books, sorry, it's just stationary for us. But the idea of those 50, 60 books again going to the landfills was jarring. So we said yes to the books, okay, fine. We didn't have a recipient, but we took the books. And uh, luckily for us, we had students from Project Thumb going to Cambodia and they went to Aknovat Primary School and they said, oh, we want to set up a library there. So that was again something that was uh, very organic. Okay, yes, we do have books, there is a need there, please take it. As of now, Traveling Pencils is a group, group of people who collect pencils, take them, carry across. And this is like a hub and spoke organization, you know. There are donors that are giving and there are recipients that are getting it from the project. But that's not the model that um, we aim for eventually. The idea is to actually have lots of hubs and spokes all around the world. Because each one of us has his or her own sphere of influence. This is a very small thing. And this can be done at any level. It could be at school level, university level, anything. And the idea is that not one group should own this project. It can be spread around, and it can be spread around in your own spheres of influence, wherever you are, at your convenience, at your level. So the traveling pencils should not be limited to a group or an organization. It could be just spread around wherever and all over the world. Now, we've had uh, people coming in from uh, Zambia, people coming in from Africa, and there is a need there. And there are people somewhere in the United States who say, yes, we are able to give. So that's the idea, to collate all the information together and allow people to actually work in their own spheres of influence. It said, um, I was doing a random Google search, and it said that every pencil can actually write about 45,000 words in English. Now, even if I reduce that by half, each one of my students should really be a PhD by now, because <laughs> They use about five pencils a year. That's a whopping 112,500 words. So you can imagine the scope. This is a very small thing and a very simple thing. Very simple ways to help. Spread the word, it's free. No money involved. Um, it involves schools, universities, community, community centers, families, and offices around you. Collect spare stationery. Wherever there is, OK, you've got too much, yeah, put it in the uh, collection box. Um, or from neighbors, friends, and add it to our collection, or ideally, take it directly to the people who need it whenever you go somewhere. Help collect, store, sort, and or carry the stationery. Now, this is where we uh, do experience a lot of challenges because there are not enough volunteers to carry it across. Um, so anything, any kind of help is good, you know, if you can store stationery. Now, there's a huge box outside my classroom, which is just an empty carton box, and um, people just come and donate their stationery. But we need people to sort it. And as the movement is growing, um, my children are finding it hard and harder and harder to actually sit and sort those things out. So that would be one thing that uh, we would need help in. And even carrying the stationery across. So we've had quite a few kind volunteers who've donated their excess baggage space um, in the airlines and they're helping us uh, carry this across the world. And this is the next step, where we would like to identify all the projects that need help. Now, there are quite a few generous people around, and we do have an excess here. People are willing to give, but where do they give? So if you are aware of any um, organization or project that is looking uh, for some kind of collection, it would be ideal to collate this. So as of now, we are on Gmail. It's travelingpencils at gmail.com, or it's a group on Facebook, Traveling Pencils. Finally, there are no boundaries or restrictions with the project. It's not that this has to be stationary or it has to be books. So it could be Traveling Pencils, books, clothes. Uh, in fact, as I'm speaking, um, we've got a huge bundle of uniforms. Now, the school had old spare uniforms which were unsold, and they passed it on to us. And there was a school in Mumbai that needed them, but we could not connect. But as I speak, these uniforms are actually being transported to Mumbai thanks to an executive who is flying from here all the way to Mumbai. So um, that is something really organic that you can do. It's traveling possibilities, and it can spread in any direction, and it does not have to be limited. When I was coming here, um, Hari and Shruti asked me, okay, so what is your message? And I was thinking, what is my message? In the light of the Earth Hour today, we are going to celebrate the Earth Hour this evening. The point is to reassess our needs and our consumption. 
Are we actually consuming what we need or are we just consuming much more than we actually need? In the context of the Jap uh, Japanese challenges, I think there needs to be a paradigm shift now and we need to reassess how much, what is our need like and what is our consumption like. And perhaps we need to have a different equation now. Um, reuse stationery, if a pencil is good enough to give away, why is it not go good enough to be used by you? That, that is our next step. So I've had quite a few students now. Interestingly, um, two of my Japanese students, their parents came up with a very simple idea. When the pencils became small, they took a popsicle stick and they tied it to the pencil. So the pencil has a nice big length, which is good for the motor skills. At the same time, the pencil is being consumed to its fullest. So if, it, if a pencil is good enough to be given away, it's probably good enough to be used by you. So reuse your stationery and give away the excess. Um, when we are doing it, we automatically reduce our uh, impact of waste disposal. Finally, the idea is to redistribute. It's not just reduce, reuse, recycle, but also to redistribute. We do have an excess here, and we are contributing negatively to the environment, whereas on the other side, we have a huge lacuna, which needs to be filled because either the resources are unavailable or they are inaffordable. So wherever there's, a, there's something in deficit here, there's always an excess which can be transferred, so redistribute. And that is the final idea behind traveling projects, uh, traveling pencils. So join us, move everything stationary. Thank you.